Justin Hamilton here with another special Can You Take This Photo Please. Two of my favourite comedians, Judith Lucy and Tony Martin, join us for a chat. So let's not waste any time and get straight to it. Justin, we, we saw some of the Mike Wilmot podcast that you did, and it's good to be on a licensed podcast. That's yes, it, right? it, it, th this podcast is costing me a fortune to get to have that license. Well, thing. it sounded like he and Lomo were blind, so we yeah. went, let's get involved. And then is we started recording. Is that what you... It seems to now. It seems right. to work that way now. I have so many nights brimful of disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That is that is just one of the many, Justin. One yeah. of the many where you've turned up and there was hardly anyone there. Yeah, right. Someone famous had died, yeah. so everyone was feeling blue. Uh, you know, the fact that, uh, as did happen to be on one occasion, um, you know, someone didn't go on radio the next day and say that they hated my act so much they wanted to take me out the back of the building and punch me in the face. Right. Have you ever had something like that happen, Tony, where uh, someone what? famous dying has ruined all charts of ha-ha? <laughs> I don't think so, but I was on... Judith and I did a show at the Star Club in Adelaide. And what I remember about that is the dressing room was the size of a phone box and we were sharing it with the Tokyo Shock Boys. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> that was Big on Hey Hey at Saturday. They were mostly pyrotechnics. So we, were stand we would be watching Mick Malloy on stage and we would be standing terrified of moving because every shelf contained explosives, yeah. firecrackers, uh, you know, petroleum. <laughs> but do you remember, Jude, in the late, I think it was late 80s, early 90s? Probably then, not. Then <laughs> I'm thinking, just off the top of my head, it seems like a long shot, but I, let's go. I remember word went around town that there was a bloke who had got up on stage at Le Joke and taken a dump on stage. And are you going, what, was that actually the act or was it like a desperate, <laughs> was it a to, comeback to a yeah. heckler? What, what circumstance? See, it's interesting because it's I opener. heard that that happened at La Mama and that right. that was definitely a show that right. someone took a dump. But right. I heard in terms of the last laugh that a, a patron had taken oh, no. a dump under a table. <laughs> oh, really? And who knows if they were a critic. Or just having a fun <laughs> night at a Bucks night. <laughs> Could be both. In the show, I mean, it, it, is it eight shows a week? I mean, the pressure is on. Yeah. I would have thought, yeah. You know, is well, it Well, you're saying... Calling, That's old material. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen this before. <laughs> Hack. You'd, uh, you'd be wanting you just right at the start of the day, that's for <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's, it's the one act that requires a good, healthy mm. diet. Well, when did you guys first meet? What, what year uh, was that? Well, it was before... I, I remember the, the first time I saw Judith on stage. And I remember the first time I saw you on stage. Really? But you take it away first. I remember seeing you <laughs> at, the, uh, at the comedy club at the Hilton. Remember mm, the Hilton mm. in Melbourne, now a Tats Lotto yes. menu. It was a great American-style comedy club. And I saw Judith do an entire 20 minutes where the only subject was things that people had yelled at you from moving vehicles. That's, that was it's an hilarious. old routine of mine, thank you. Who else was on? Who would oh, I have been supporting? Man. Who would you have been on with? Maybe Fleety? Maybe, I think you were on with a man called Bob the Ape Man Burton. Does that ring a, a yes, bell? Yes, it does. A man in a tuxedo who just impersonated a, an orangutan for... for yes, for he kind minutes. of went on to like direct festivals right. and things, Bob right. Burton. Right. But what was kind of fantastic <laughs> about the Hilton, I can't believe I've put that sentence together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> is that even if it was a kind of a waking nightmare, you would get like six weeks work yeah, and right. performing six nights a week and you sort of got to be less shit. And of course, you know, my big line is one of the people I supported was Mark Price, who was Skippy from Family, Family Ties, Ties, who I slept with. Yes. So that's my <laughs> six degrees of separation with Michael J. Fox, which I think is fun for everybody. But the first time I saw you, it was at the ESPY. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, basically, I mean, obviously I knew about the DJ, and, but I didn't know what you looked like. I right. didn't know what you and well, Mick looked I, like. At that time, I was called the fat man on radio. Right. So that allowed me to do stand-up with people not connecting that it was me. Well, basically, you uh, and Mick must have performed, would you have performed together? Uh, no, I don't think so. We were always two separate. Right, so acts, you would have we gone were on. We were usually on the same night. 
And yeah. I remember I was standing next to Greg Fleet because I, I, I literally had no idea who you were and you were both obviously really funny. Right. And I remember turning to Fleety, I'm assuming it's all right to swear on this. Yeah. Of course it is. And going, who the fuck are these guys? <laughs> yeah. Where have they come from? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I always remember you did a show <laughs> at La Mama called no waiter, what was it? I ordered the, the avocado. avocado. Yeah. And, and it didn't even have your name <laughs> in the ad. Not it really. The well name of the show was, <laughs> was enough. Apparently they didn't have to say who was in it. You know those uh, sort of school annuals and for your final year of high school you can you, you could put things under your name right, and yeah. like most people did you know won the maths prize but and i put no waiter i ordered the avocado <laughs> yeah because it was a line from the kenny everett video show <laughs> oh, yes. which i thought was the funniest thing i'd ever seen remember he did star quiz where at the <laughs> yes. end of the show they would yes. come back and people would have had the green gunk all yes. over them yes. and for the life of me i can't even remember who the b grades Celebrity was, but they just turned to the camera and went, "No waiter, I ordered the avocado," <laughs> Is that what that means? and I simply thought it was the funniest thing yeah. I'd ever seen. It, you know, when you uh, started out here in Melbourne, what was the scene like? Because uh, I think audiences are so much more civil now. Oh! Without question. Yes. <laughs> like a tough gig for a young comic now is a little bit like, oh, you know, is silence. Didn't laugh as much. Silence. But back then. Audiences are so polite, mm. don't I, you I reckon? I think part of the key is venues like the local yep. and the one that uh, Charlie Pickering ran in Brunswick Street. Oh, yeah, stage time. Where there's couches and comfy chairs. Yeah. It's hard to get angry and heckle someone when you're, <laughs> when you're, when you're in three position comfort. <laughs> yeah, it really <laughs> undermines it. That's new. The chairs were much harder in our day. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember a friend of mine said at the time, having seen me do another disastrous midnight show at Le Joe, <laughs> she just went, comedy is the only Dickensian form of entertainment <laughs> yeah. left. Yeah. People just drank until they vomited through yeah. their noses and lost consciousness. Consciousness. Yeah, yeah. So that generally meant that they weren't necessarily connoisseurs of fine humour. Yeah, I've yeah. never seen anyone say that on one of those warehouse comedy festivals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have to stop the show yes. to give vomiting advice. Yeah. I remember I did a venue that was just uh, so terrible. I, I did it with Anthony Morgan. It was actually one of the first gigs I ever did with Anthony. And it was burnt to the ground for the following <laughs> week. Right, yeah. I remember another night at La Joke where I was getting heckled so much much because I didn't shave under my arms that it actually gave birth to a, a famous routine of Anthony's yeah. because this woman uh, she kept talking the whole way through my spot and I finally went what's the problem and she went my boyfriend thinks you're a lesbian because you don't shave under your arms I can't remember what my hilarious response to that was probably because it was pretty early on just fuck off I yeah. very much doubt I had much else to give but anyway then Anthony came on and he'd managed to find some shaving cream and a spatula <laughs> right, right. and started shaving his arms on stage right. and then just turned to the audience and said I don't want that whole lesbian question hanging over me for the rest of the night so you know yeah out of adversity came, <laughs> came some gold. <laughs> so you see, it's it swings and roundabouts, isn't yeah. it? Because yes. the audiences were tougher, but yeah. they were there and you got yeah. paid. And yeah. so, you, you would do, yeah. I remember doing, you know, eight week seasons at the comedy club where you're doing eight shows a week. Yeah. So in, if you're doing 64 shows in eight weeks, yeah. Anyone is going to get better. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to get better yeah. over that period. Yeah. Uh, there, there, there are some acts that I've seen who, <laughs> who uh, will, Maybe will not bump the that. guy taking a crap. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he ended up quite diminished by the end That's of it. Right. Uh, well, Tony, Judith, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Justin. Thanks thank for you. having us. Yes. Cheers. That was fun. <laughs>